70% of you runners say you prefer single leg exercises as a method to running faster. But does the science actually back this up? This video will bring you up to date on the latest research and give you clear guidance on what changes you need to make right now to run faster. I posed the question across my email list, Facebook group and YouTube channel. If you had to choose, would you prefer to do double leg or single leg strengthening exercises if the aim was to improve your running? And of course, a lot of you would pick both, but for debate's sake, I made you pick one or the other. I also wanted to add the specific goal of running faster because a lot of runners strength trained for different reasons. Within three days, I received 466 votes and 135 short answers explaining why you chose your answer. So let's see how your answers stack up in the research. Out of all the single leg voters, 15% chose this answer because it's supposed to help with core activation and balance. And yes, I do agree, if you have a smaller base of support, your core and trunk will work harder. This has been shown in studies like this. In fact, single leg deadlifts can activate the core just as much as some traditional core exercises. However, it can't be ignored that bumping up the weight and moving to double leg exercises also activates the core. In fact, this study looking at core activation showed that heavy deadlifts and squats easily outperformed traditional core exercises like side planks and supermans. I tried my hardest searching for research comparing double leg squats to single leg squats on core activation, but I couldn't find anything. But have the reassurance to know that the core isn't neglected just because you adopt double leg exercises. When it comes to balance, this paper highlighted a meta-analysis that showed no noticeable changes in balance tests between single leg and double leg strength training. But another popular reason you runners chose single leg exercises is to fix muscle imbalances. And again, I agree with your reasoning. And if you're injured, make sure imbalances are addressed. In fact, large data sets have shown the main risk factor for runners developing a future injury is the presence of any other injury in the past 12 months. And I believe one of the reasons for this is inadequate rehab from the prior injury. So if you have imbalances, correct this with a dedicated progressive rehab routine. However, keep in mind that strength differences of less than 10% between limbs is typically considered normal, especially for healthy uninjured individuals. If your strength deficits are greater than 10%, then lay out an action plan of getting there, which for most should take four to six weeks. But remember, for this debate, we're focusing on running performance in healthy runners, not rehab. So I'm gonna disregard this reason in my final verdict. By the way, if you're wondering how I managed to find so many research papers in my videos, it's because I've spent the last five years looking for interesting running research and saving it into an ever-growing Google Drive. And you can get full access to this Google Drive too by becoming a Run Smarter member for just $8.99 per month. But if sifting through thousands of papers sounds daunting, Members also get access to my AI assistant. So you can ask any question on rehab, nutrition, race prep, or performance, and it will comb through my entire Google Drive and condense everything into a practical answer along with direct clickable links to the papers referenced. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing to prepare for these videos. For example, I knew there was a paper linking past injuries to future injuries, and I asked the AI assistant to go find it for me. If you're intrigued and want to learn more, then press pause on this video right now and the link to becoming a Run Smarter member will be in the description of this video. Which brings me to the last main reason you runners chose single leg exercises and that is the rationale that running is a single leg sport and therefore is enhanced with single leg exercises. And while this is sound rationale, it might not be that simple. For instance, this paper looked at single leg plyometrics versus double leg plyometrics and saw similar improvements in running economy and a 3K time trial. Now, this is where you need to focus. If we boil everything down and focus on how you can actually run faster through strength training, you essentially need two main adaptations to take place. The first is to have your muscles recruit more muscle fibers and produce more force overall. And the second is to make sure your tendons are stiffer so they can absorb and return energy more efficiently. With this in mind, let's see if it's easier for single leg or double leg exercises to trigger these adaptations. 
From looking at the research, it seems like the best way to run faster through strength training is either with heavy resistance training or explosive and plyometric training. Let's focus on heavy stuff as this compelling systematic review looking at running performance says that heavy resistance training is more effective than plyometric training. But even more interestingly, they added that for runners to see the most benefit in performance, they need to be lifting near maximal loads with only a few reps. They specifically mentioned more than 90% of your one rep maximum or less than your four rep maximum. This is the most effective way to make your tendons stiff and your muscles robust for speed. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Let's put these numbers into context. Take for example, the back squat. If the maximum weight I can lift for only one rep is 140 kilograms and is too heavy for me to possibly do a second rep, that is my true one RM or one rep max. So this paper is saying to reap the most benefit, I need to be doing sets and reps at 90% of this, which is at or more than 126 kilograms. My workout would then include four sets of three reps with a three to five minute rest in between sets. With that said, let's draw our attention to single leg exercises such as single leg squats or single leg deadlifts. Because of the unstable nature of these exercises, it would be very hard and even dangerous to attempt with heavy weights. My guess is that your form would break down first and the quality of the movement well before getting anywhere near 90% of your single leg squat 1RM and therefore creating a ceiling for yourself to reach your full potential. I do have a few single leg exceptions though, but I can't reveal them until I've introduced you to this graph which helps summarize my final verdict. The more stable the exercise is, the heavier you can lift, and therefore the more potential that exercise has to benefit your running. And I say potential because you could have the most stable exercises, but still not triggering the right adaptations because there isn't any deliberate effort to increase the weights and get into the right dosage. Too often I've seen runners stay complacent at three sets of 10 with the exercise feeling somewhat hard and go months without progressing. So for most runners experienced with strength training, I suggest a rep range of three to four sets of six with the feeling like you only have one or two reps left in you by the end of each set. A three to five minute rest should give you enough recovery time to execute the next set properly. But let's go back to this graph because there are also some stable single leg exercises that have great potential. Let's work up the chart, starting with single leg squats on a wobble board, then single leg squats on a stable surface, then a walking lunge, a split squat, or a static lunge. Now we're getting into exercises that are still single leg, but because they have a better base of support, you can lift significantly heavy. It should feel extremely hard by the end of six reps on each side, and it will offer core activation and work the correct muscles for running. I'll get to my final verdict and my exercise recommendations in a second. However, it's worth mentioning that there are even more stable single leg exercises that you can push to your one RM, only if you have access to gym machines. The best among them would be the single leg leg press machine. In fact, when doing research for this video, I came across something called the bilateral deficit phenomenon, which means our bodies sometimes generate less total force with two legs together than the sum of what each can do individually. And while the studies I found are small scale, this paper found a double leg deficit around 95% on average, meaning 5% of strength is lost using two legs compared to the sum of the single legs independently. However, some participants had a deficit reaching nearly 19%. In other words, you might be losing somewhere between five and 19% of your maximal strength potential doing double leg exercises compared to doing the same effort with single leg work. But this seems to only be for really stable single leg exercises. So for most runners wanting to run faster, here are my four recommended exercises. I'd choose a double leg squat, a double leg deadlift, and a double leg calf raise, all within three to four sets of six that are gradually progressed in weight as you get stronger. If you're experienced in the gym, it can be four sets of three, around 90 to 95% of your one RM. If you have access to a gym, a heavy single leg leg press can replace a double leg squat if preferred. 
My fourth recommended exercise would be any single leg exercise that fits around here in the stability chart and provided you have adequate technique to push into heavier weights safely. But I do know there are a lot of variations out there like static lunges, step lunges, walking lunges, and either taking a short step or a long step. In fact, subtle differences can change how hard your running muscles are actually working. With this confusion in mind, I decided to create this video to give you the verdict on the best lunge to do based on the latest research. So you can press pause on this video right now to check out the Run Smarter membership in the description. And when you come back, you can click on this thumbnail to learn all about it.